so here we are. I guess I must have made another music video because uh, you want to ask me some more questions, right? Yes, I'm very curious and interested in uh, what you have to say. Tell me, what inspired you to make this music video? Well, anytime a musician says or gives you the green light to make a music video on any of his songs, you kind of take it. Why, why don't you make it? Like, you know what you're doing. I seen the Stuck in the House remake that you did, the SNL stuff. You know, that was hilarious, bro. Like, why don't you do something like that? So I've known Zay Cooper for a while, and we've collaborated on some lyric videos. And he recently contacted me, said that he uh, was talking to a couple a and reps, and they wanted a couple more lyric videos. So I was, I had this idea, like, how can I make the lyric videos that we made even better? Look at that watch. <laughs> So I wanted to challenge myself to kind of, you know, take the lyric videos that we were making and just make them that much better. And that was Pass That Shit by Zay Copa, the video that I made. Why did you choose this song, Pass That Shit? Well, uh, I thought it was a low priority song for Zay Copa. And I also thought I can execute the production of it during quarantine. So after talking to uh, Zay Copa, uh, I asked him like, hey, if you were gonna make a video, what would the next video that you make be? And we came to the conclusion that it definitely wasn't gonna be past that shit. So I think I chose something that wasn't a high priority. So I was able to kind of work with it. And as you saw, I, can, I didn't need much to make the video. I can do it with a green screen and I can do it in the comfort of my own home. So, uh, I, you know, those two things I thought that I can achieve, which was pick a song from Zay Copa that wasn't high priority and also execute and produce it being stuck in my house during quarantine. What are your thoughts on making a video that promotes weed? Well, one, I don't see it as a big problem. I can see how a lot of other people might see it as a bigger issue than myself. To me, I just see, a, or I've known and still know a lot of professionals that smoke marijuana. Um, and it's not right or wrong. I just, I just know that a lot of people that do it. And I just felt that I can kind of make a video that kind of touches on a subject, but also do it in a way that was a little bit more tasteful, a little bit more tactful than what you might see in a typical hip hop video. And that's what I tried to do in this video. Are you for or against marijuana? Well, it's funny because you make this video and obviously you think, oh, this guy must be a huge advocate of it. So um, I'm not against it. I would say that um, I support it. I, I think it's, um, you know, in my experience, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more accepting than maybe just as alcohol. I see it as very common, uh, but, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is that if, if as I'm raising children and one day they're going to be experimental, to me, I rather see um, recreational marijuana and where my kids can experiment with stuff that is um, safe. So it'd be more, I'd be more willing to, you know, accept a, and approve it or support the fact that it's safe for my kids to try. The last thing I'd want is my kids to get something off the street and it be laced. So if they're going to try something in their experimental years, I'd want something to be safe. Now, obviously, everybody has a different opinion about that, but that's my opinion that I just believe that kids are experimental and why not give them an outlet uh, that could be safe? Yes, because uh, I know that there are some synthetic stuff out there that is very, very nasty. And I've seen the results and what it does to people, and they are definitely, uh, it burns their mind. What was the concept of the video? Well, the concept was trying to intertwine the cultural use of it seen in movies with the advocacy that you see going around in the States and in the news, and trying to intertwine that with the visuals of the artist during the, 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 the verses to kind of just put that out there. So the concept was how do you take those elements, the imagery of movies, uh, what's going on at, at, at the specific time of the, it being approved and legislation and it becoming more you know, legal with what the artist is trying to you know, 
tell, which is that he's smoking marijuana. Yeah, there's definitely a perspective on what's being seen as far as acceptable in society. How much, uh, how much was your budget on this? <laughs> well, that's always a great question. So, um, well, I had to buy two large fries and two apple pies and I ate a banana. So once again, the reason why I wanted to kind of do this was I felt like my budget and producing this in my house was something that I can execute and do. Uh, so I don't know, let's just say three, six, I don't know, 10 bucks. How long did it take you to make this video? This video took a little longer than expected. Uh, the whole process was about three weeks from starting to lay down the first part of it, and then changing it, and then finishing it. So it took three weeks. What was the hardest thing about making past that shit? Well, the hardest thing for me was getting my wife to approve it. Um, when I went into this project, I kind of didn't really tell anybody. I was just, you know, trying to be creative and trying to continue the last video that I made, which was stuck in the house. I really had fun with that. And I wanted to see, wow, if I can choose another song and do it from the house, let me do it. But when I showed my wife the first version of it, she hated it. And she kind of got upset and she didn't talk to me for the rest of the night. And from what we, yeah, from what we gathered, she didn't understand why I needed to make this, why I needed a star in it. She didn't like the concept. She didn't like, you know, the topic. And when I was showing her, my goal was to make my wife proud of it. Now, my wife is very, um, you know, she's a good editor. She can look at stuff and give you a lot of feedback. So I had to kind of get over that initial thing to say, hey, I know you don't like it. But I just knew if I made her happy, then I can release it and kind of be proud of it. So the hardest part was to kind of get her to open up what she didn't like about it and what I could change of the video that she would kind of understand that I needed to make this video in a way to kind of increase my skills and, you know, help my career and try to further myself down this path of making music videos and being creative with film. So it was definitely a hard part because she didn't talk to me for the whole night. And then we kind of just let it digest it and accept it. And then I really worked to make her happy. So that was the hardest part. So I, I achieved that. Sounds like it worked out. Uh, sounds like she had, uh, definitely approved it. Do you think it's weird lip syncing to someone else's song? You know, if you look at what I did with Stuck in the House, I lip sync to that song. And in talking to my wife, she said that it was different because now I was remaking that video. And in this video, it's kind of like I'm lip syncing to somebody else's song, but I'm making an original lyric video. So in some ways, no, it's not weird for me. I think people can take it away that maybe I'm trying to be him or, you know, do it. But if I had an opportunity, like I discussed before, to kind of create an original music video for somebody, yeah, I would lip sync them all the time. And I think there's something fun. It actually was showing that not only could I remake a video of somebody else's, but now I can be original and it doesn't have to be my song. So no, I don't find it to be, um, I don't find it to be weird. I'd do it again. Good. <laughs> I'd be happy to see some other ones come out. Do you think a future employer would want to see this video? I think it depends on what type of employer I'm trying to get with. Uh, I think for myself, I'm looking at this as a career move that I need to take risks in my career. And if I just made videos that were just in this box and everybody's accepting of them or it's acceptable, then I don't really think that my artwork is going to be seen. So sometimes you have to take risks in there. And I think that this is one of those moves that I want to take a as a risk to try to give it. Uh, one thing for myself is you'll see that there's never a, a, a scene or a shot that you see me with cannabis. You never see me smoking it. You never see me on my person. So I don't really smoke. So it's not my lifestyle. So I was really kind of just acting and then playing a character. And that's why in the video, I don't even pretend to have it in me, on me. So it was very conscious decision to, you know, 
Uh, I could have taken cigarettes and, and used it to kind of hold it in my hand, but that's not the choice that I wanted to make. So um, I felt like, again, what I was doing was art and I was trying to create a video that wasn't it about me using it, even when I could have pretended, uh, but it was more about what imagery I can surround myself with in creating this. So, you know, the idea is, is as, a, as a filmmaker, you have to take risk and, and this is the risky project that I'm gonna give a shot to. So, uh, and again, back to the employer, I think it depends on what, what type of employer you have. If I was trying to get hired as a Christian uh, counselor, camp counselor, yeah, I think it bothers somebody. If you're going to be a police officer, I think it would bother them. But if you're going to be a filmmaker, I don't think it matters. Or if you're going to be an actor, they uh, certainly may be interested in you. I know, yeah. I mean, you have to kiss women that aren't even your wife. <laughs> exactly. Ryan, what was your favorite scene in the video? In this particular video, my favorite scene was uh, uh, he was out in Denver, eating ice cream out in Denver. Uh, to me, I was able to layer it. Um, I was la able to layer it pretty good with like a background of Denver. Uh, one of the lines says, I'm eating ice cream. And then I had some snowflakes falling down. So I was able to layer that video pretty good. And so that little section, every time I see it, it was like, oh, wow, I think I did a pretty good job in that scene. So it's my favorite scene. Cool. Do you remember watching many of the movies that you used in your video? Yeah, I think I've pretty much seen every one of them. Um, my favorite one was the Cheech and Chong one because I think that was like early 80s and I, I, I can't help but think of my dad who took me to go see that movie as a young kid. So you seeing all those movies, I remember most of those movies and it kind of caught me reminiscing and thinking about the past. Uh, so yeah, and, and there's actually one thing I wanted to kind of share that is an addition to that. So there's a movie called Half Baked, and it's got Dave Chappelle, and it's got Jim Brewer, which was the goat boy. So um, I was at the University of South Carolina, and I was going to school for journalism. And somehow Jim Brewer, the goat boy, was coming to a comedy club at Columbia, South Carolina, in the town. So I came up and concocted this story that I was a reporter for the University of South Carolina newspaper, and I had talked to the comedy club about doing an interview with Jim Brewer. So somehow yeah. they approved it. So they told me to come down to the comedy club one night that he was doing and he was gonna you know, invite me back and I was gonna be able to ask him a few questions. I have no idea what the questions were. So I went there, he did his, he did his performance and at the end they invite me back and uh, you know, I go back there and you know, I have a couple questions that I just wanted to kind of ask Jim Brewer and the first thing he goes is like, hey, you, you smoke weed? And I was like, no, I don't smoke weed. And then it seemed like the whole interview just went downhill from there because it seemed like he just wanted to smoke out with me. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I should have said yes. Uh, I could have just played it completely different. So that was the one time that, you know, and when I was editing this video, I had to use the scene of uh, – half baked with Jim Brewer and it just kind of brought all these memories back that I'm, you know, here I am in the green room with Jim Brewer. He's asking me if I smoke weed and I totally blow it. I, I, I probably at the time might've, might've had it on me, whatever, but um, I could have totally you could have been it. his best bud. I know. <laughs> totally blew it. Yeah. Why star in the video yourself? Why not wait for Zay Copa to do the video? Well, I think somewhere deep down inside of me, I've always wanted to be a rapper. Uh, my cousin and I, when we were young, when we heard Beastie Boys and that whole genre, that whole album came out, my cousin Jason and I would always just sit in the room and write raps. And then, you know, we would, we would do things together. So I think deep inside of me, I always wanted to be a rapper. So this is kind of like the next best thing to kind of fulfill this like weird desire to be a rapper. So, yeah, I could have waited for him, but obviously we were under quarantine. He was off in Naples and, you know, I was at the house quarantined. So I figured, you know, why not just do it myself? And then once I make this video, then I could go make other videos, but at least I can say, hey, here's your song. Here's what I can do with your song. Here it is. And uh, that is now my next you know, goal or my next achievement in making music videos. So 
I start in it because I can also, you know, direct myself. And then eventually, you know, when you work with other artists, you can direct them because now you can say, well, look what I did by myself. Now do it. But I think it was all just based upon my desire to be a rapper somewhere. I'll never be a rapper. So this is the next best thing. Yeah. In making this video, it should be able to open some doors for you as far as making videos for others, right? Uh, that's the goal. I think if I can show somebody that, like, listen, this is what I can do with a $10 budget and I can do it, um, I think that's the goal, right? That I can make another music video. But I also been talking to Zay Copa and saying that this is the template. Like his music and his, his rap uses a lot of imagery and you can see it and because I lace it throughout the video that I'm able to pull these ideas. It's not because I'm some genius. It's because I'm listening to the lyrics and I'm pulling this imagery and I'm displaying it in a funky way to kind of go along with his music. So I hope that this is the template that we can use for him uh, that I just happened to do first to say, hey, this is, this is what we can do. This is what I always envisioned because him and I used to work together at the previous company I worked for. And I always had an idea and a vision that I saw him just like that, the same distance of the camera, uh, rapping. So this idea and how I shot this video was exactly how I think I could do more videos with his music. So I hope this opens doors. So you're in tune or able to get in tune with his thoughts in order to design and bring out the video as he sees it well it's in the it's in the it's in the lyrics though so if you look at like uh but booty naked eating ice cream mountain denver well you see that i can i can display that um when it says that you know i, I think his 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 music which which i don't think a lot of young rappers can't do they don't know how to put that imagery in and lace it through where i think if you really sit down and listen to his lyrics it's completely image based with different things and i think that's why i like working with him or i've always told him that that's what i enjoy most about his music is i see his music i think a lot of people when they listen to a rapper they're like ah another rapper and i'm like man just just listen to what he's saying and and envision and visualize it because it's pretty cool i i think not too many people can do that so so you're able to put his vision to film yes yeah and in this particular case, a couple months ago, we started making lyric videos. Like we, we knew we wanted to work together, but I didn't know how to make a music video. So I said, let's make a lyric video, which is you put the lyrics, you display right. the lyrics. That's why even this video is not an official video. It's a lyric video where the lyrics are, you know, down below. Right on the screen. So that's why it's not an official music video. So when we were doing that a few months ago, I had this idea is like, let's just animate and, and visualize what you're talking about. And he's very, he's very detailed oriented. So when we did the Fugazi video, I know you've seen it. Right. Yeah. He had a certain watch. Now we would search the internet and we'd spend hours looking for a particular watch that he remembers from his childhood or his young adulthood that he would use. And that would take too long. So I wanted to, make a video that was a little bit faster than what it took to make a lyric video based upon images that the artist thought of. So I thought this was speeding it up where you get, sometimes if you don't have to find an image, you just let the rapper, as you see my character was rapping along. Sometimes there was no imagery around them. I was able to kind of just get by it with maybe some like, you know, duplicating it or some, you know, dissolves or something like that just to kind of do it. So it was easier that I didn't have to find an image for every section. And I think that's what this whole template of, you know, doing a lyric video where the lyrics are displayed with imagery. This is like, like I, like I mentioned in the video, this is like a lyric video on steroids because, you know, he can make his own original videos and I can still keep my own thing. I can make more of just me being in a lyric video, but it's a lyric video and not an official video. Thank you again, Ryan, for taking the time to answer some questions for me so that I can understand where you're going with this, because uh, I'm sure not only myself, but your wife was concerned about you. And I'm glad to see that, uh, that it is truly for the art. 
Yes. Uh, and I wanted to say um, thanks for again for interviewing me. I think it's important for people to have an idea, especially with this video. What was the thought processes? Why did I want to do it? So I appreciate you for kind of taking the time to kind of do it. But I want to kind of end on this one last question. Uh, what did you think of the music video? In uh, watching it, I think that you really did tap in to what was being said in the lyrics and bringing the lyrics to life. Cool. Thanks. I take that as a compliment. It is. It's a compliment. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. All right. All right. Now to see the finished product. <laughs> Thanks again, Ryan. Thank you.